Hey y'all, I am here at the Capitol with Representative Carl Sherman, and we finished a press conference, but Representative Sherman, you recently visited the hobby unit, and my my community on here kind of went crazy. They were so excited for that. Can you tell us just a little bit about that visit? <laughs> yeah, I, I, you know, uh, it certainly wasn't my first time to hobby, and uh, Lord's will, you know, it won't be my last time. Uh, the work there uh, is so important, and, and visiting with the ladies uh, there, uh, you know, it, it's it's so important that we understand that we are one, and this shouldn't be that we have people in these conditions. And uh, I was talking to a lady who wanted to go and see the uh, cafeteria area. And, you know, in the prisons, we have shifts uh, where people work different shifts. And uh, by the time we got over there, because I had made a makeshift office there uh, to visit with different individuals and whoever, uh, they didn't have to have an appointment. They could come and sit down with me and we would talk and I would listen to their issues. Then we went over to the uh, child area mm -hmm. and uh, you know just talking with some of the ladies they had gotten off work off their shift and there was a lady that was at the back of the line a uh, young african-american woman who uh, I spoke to her asked her how she was doing and uh, then she she went on and the warden was taking me to the ice area where you, they make the ice cubes yes sir I'm sorry, Marcy. I'm going on and on. Into That's this, okay. But, we're but hearing it. it means something to me. Yes, sir. Uh, and so as we're getting ready to leave that area, and they have their line, and, you know, they're uh, having to, you know, clock out. Uh, so there's a count that's being taken. And, again, this young woman is the last person in line. And when uh, we were getting ready to leave, I look back, and I notice she's crying. And so, you know, I told the warden, and the warden called her name, her first name. That meant something to me. Yes. She, she called her by her first name. And I know that there are a lot of citizens that are incarcerated at the hobby unit, but she knew her name and asked her to come over. And she came over to us, and she said, what's wrong? The warden asked, what's wrong with you? And she said, uh, do you need uh, counseling, mental counseling? Can you imagine living in those conditions? You're going to need support. And she said, no, no. And she was crying. She said, what's, what's wrong? And she said, he cares. I thought that she was talking about somebody else, but she was talking about me. And I thought, all I did was come and ask you questions about your day. And, and she had just gotten a set off. And I didn't know it, but, you know, she was up for a parole and, and she got a set off, I think, for two more years. We have to change our system. Nobody saw her. They just looked at a file. This is not the same person who was incarcerated. And we leave no room for change. And I think it's because we are lacking a sense of humanity. That, that could be my brother, my sister, yes. my mother, my father. We are all one. And, and, you know, we can get so high and mighty in these ivy towers where we think, you know, this is it. But I believe we've been placed in positions to be concerned about those who don't have a seat at the table. Yes, sir. And so, yes, sir. Uh, you know, I just, I mean, I, I really enjoy uh, my visit, but I, but it's hard because I know that I get to leave. Yes, sir. And uh, even though, you know, I know that often, well, every time, invariably, I am off schedule because uh, there are other people that I want to uh, 
talk to. And maybe, who knows, maybe God placed them, you know, in front of me that I can do something. You know, one of the things I find very profound and revelatory about what Jesus says when he returns and the response of the people, when he says that I was hungry, you fed me, I was thirsty, you gave me drink, and the last thing is when I was in prison, you visited me. And they say, when did we do these things? His response is, when you did it to the least of these, you did it to me. Lord, I mean, see, the ones who he cast aside, they, they say the same thing, right? Same response, but their response is coming from the perspective of if we had known it was you, we would have treated you differently. Yes, sir. Jesus is telling us that, you know, don't, it's nothing to treat the, the well-connected well. That's nothing. But you got to think about everybody because everybody could be in that situation. And you don't have to be guilty. I've said this before, Marcy, you probably heard me. When we only had a choice between two, Jesus and Barabbas, we got it wrong. We did, yes, sir. Yeah, and, and so, uh, you know, we have to make change. And, and I believe that it is time for us to declare an emergency because we can, we have the money. We have a surplus. Our surplus in Texas is more than some states' total budget, just our surplus. And so we have the resources, and I believe uh, that if we uh, are uh, genuine and authentic in our uh, desire to follow Christ, then we will do that. Yeah. And I'm, I mean, the people at Hobby uh, keep, you know, keep the faith, keep hope, knowing that change is going to happen. Change is going to happen. Please, please, thank you for surviving. Thank you also for those who are doing more than surviving and thriving in an environment that is not conducive for humanity. But I know that God will provide for us because we're all in this together. Hebrews 13 and 3 says that we are one in this. So one humanity, we will get through this. Yes, Thank sir. you. Thank you. Thank you, Rep. Can I hug you, Thank Rep? You. Thank you, sir. We appreciate you so much. <laughs>